Fellas, considering this weekend we have UFC 304 back in the UK, I thought we'd take a look at what is, in my opinion, not only the greatest card to be on UK soil, but also one of the greatest fight nights, if not the greatest fight night of all time. And I'm talking about UFC fight night Aspinall versus Volkov. If you watch this live, you will know how good of a fight night this was. We're going to have a little bit of a recap because it was a fever dream. It was. This is better than some pay-per-views. This honestly felt like a pay-per-view watching it live. There were so many big names on this card, so many stars, and this honestly felt like a pay-per-view for a fight night. So we're going to be having a little bit of a recap. Still, in my opinion, the best event in the UK. Maybe this weekend can top it at UFC 304, but it's going to be hard to top it because if you watch this live, you'll know how good of a fight night this was. So we started off the card with the debut of Mohamed Makayev. Now, obviously, Mohamed Makayev, who was originally scheduled to be on the main card of UFC 304, so the fact that he, he, he was all opening up the card of a fight night at UFC uh, London against Cody Durden as well. I mean, first of all, obviously, now we know Mohamed Makai for being one of the best flyweights in the world, and it wasn't even a crotch-sniffing performance where he just held Cody Durden down for the majority of the fight. This was a quick finish for Mohamed Makayev. We were saved as a snooze fest. He went out there, dropped Cody Durden, got the submission in the first round, and kicked off the card in, uh, honestly, great fashion. I mean, to get a finish in less than a minute on that card was crazy. And he did it to Cody Durden as well. It isn't like he did it to a can. He did it to Cody Durden, who, well, I mean... A couple more wins and this dude could be ranked and he went on a streak after losing to Mohamed Makayev. So for this to open up the main card as well is absolutely crazy. For a finite as well, we know how good Makayev is. This kicked off the card. Great way to kick off the card. And like I said, it wasn't like we had to see Mohamed Makayev, Makayev snooze fest uh, like he has against guys like Charles Johnson. He went out there, got a finish in like a minute, dropped Cody Durden, latched up the submission, got the finish, kicked off the card. Um, and now he's ranked six in the world as well. So for that to kick off the card was crazy. Then we had Paul Craig doing what he does the best, getting a comeback in front of the UK. Yeah, Paul Craig's one of those fighters where I feel like if Paul Craig beats you, it probably means you're a good fighter. He did it to Magomed Ankalaev, he did it to Jamal Hill, and he did it to Nikita Krylov in this fight. Um, this was so low down on the card. This was on the prelims as well for a fight night. You've got Nikita Krylov, and I know at the time they weren't big stars, but now Nikita Krylov's ranked, I think, fifth in the light heavyweight division. And Paul Craig, obviously, still a fairly big name, not because, he's, not because of his skill, but the fact that he's able to finish anyone from everywhere. So basically, this fight consisted of Paul Craig getting absolutely battered in front of the home crowd ground and pound from the key to Krylov just absolutely dominating Paul Craig and then him doing what he does best latching up the triangle chalk after just getting dominated by Nikita Krylov and he beat Nikita Krylov and can we just talk about how stacked his resume is already ready for Paul Craig I mean Nikita Krylov Jamal Hill and Ankalaev on the same resume is crazy that's some of the best, that's probably the best resume in the light heavyweight division right now, apart from Pereira. So for him to do that on the prelims as well to Nikita Kralov, who again, as we know, is one of the best light heavyweights in the world, was crazy as well. Uh, then we have Sergei Pavlovich on the card as well. This is where he KO'd Shamil in the first round, did what he does best, absolutely destroyed him. And this was the first of many first round KOs from Sergei Pavlovich as well. Fighting on the same card of Aspinall was kind of, I don't know, it was kind of weird to see uh, Pavlovich on the prelims of Aspinall, knowing that eventually we were going to see this fight, and neither of them had lost since they went on a streak, apart from Aspinall's injury. But yeah, we had to see Sergei Pavlovich, again, one of the best in the world right now. Maybe he was better a couple of fights ago, but... We know him for being one of the best feather heavyweights in the world. He's top five ranked. He was on the prelims as well. Got a first round KO. Again, bearing in mind, this is a fight night. If any of these guys were on the same card today, this would 100% be a pay-per-view. So the fact that we had Pavlovich getting another first round KO as he does, um, starting off the streak as well was crazy. This was on the prelims as well. Then we had Ilya Teporia, one of the biggest stars in the UFC right now. Obviously, this dude's a pay-per-view main event star. He was on this card as well. This was after he had a bit of an altercation with Paddy Pimlet. The UK crowd hated him because of that altercation with Paddy Pimlet. That altercation kind of started off the, I guess you can call it, beef between the two of them. This was a good fight to watch because I feel like this fight was where we actually had to see Ilya Teporia face some sort of adversity. And I'm not calling Jai Herbert a good fighter. But um, there were times when Jai Herbert was landing good shots on the feet. He dropped Ilya Teporia with a head kick. I thought he KO'd him at first. And then Ilya Teporia backs him up against the cage, similar to how he did to Volkanovski, and puts Jai Herbert out cold in this fight. One of the most brutal knockouts that he's ever delivered as well for Ilya Teporia. Backed him up, landed to the body, went up top, KO'd Jai Herbert out stiff, silenced the UK crowd, went on the mic, started shit-talking Paddy Pimlet. And again, this was just the start of Ilya Teporia's running the UFC. And this was on the prelims as well. And actually, I think it might have been... It might have ever been the opener of the main card or the prelims, but either way, the fact that Ilya Tapori was so low down on the card, and this was a fight night as well. Like, imagine nowadays we had a fight night with Taporia, Nikita Krylov, Paul Craig, Mohamed Makayev, Sergei Pavlovich in the same card. That would be crazy. So, we had Ilya Tapori, 
delivering a brutal finish to Jai Herbert. Absolutely knocked his head off. Then we had Molly McCann uh, against Luana Carolina. Now, obviously, I'm not calling Molly McCann a massive pay-per-view star. I'm not saying she's any anywhere close to the other stars I've had on this list. But this might have gone down as one of the most brutal KOs in women MMA history. This was the spinning elbow that Molly McCann delivered that has gone viral. Some people said it could have been the knockout of the year for 2022, um, at least for women MMA. The spinning elbow, honest, I, I was concerned for Carolina after that fight. When she when she delivered that spinning elbow and she was unconscious, I honestly worried for her because that looked brutal for Molly McCann. Um, the only bad thing to cover from that KO was obviously Molly McCann kind of got a bit delusional from there. Obviously, then she got humbled by Erin Blankfield a couple of fights later. But she delivered a spinning elbow. Um, first time she was ever on the same card with Paddy Pimlet as well and it was a brutal KO and this was all on the same card as well this is what I mean look how many finishes we've already had to Poria Herbert Pavlovich Craig Makayev this was all on the same card you got a round three KO brutal spinning elbow and then we had Paddy Pimlet in his first UK appearance now again I'm not saying he, he you know he put on this masterclass performance but he got a first round submission in front of the UK and as a UK fan it was kind of good to see because there was a lot of questions on how would it look when Paddy Pimlet finally fights in front of a crowd because because we saw him debut against Luigi Vendramini um, and obviously was fighting in front of the UK crowd for the first time. Said it was going to blow the roof off the place. I mean, I don't know if he did in this first fight, to be honest. I mean, especially at the weigh-ins. You look at the weigh-ins, no one was cheering for Pimmel uh, Pim at all. The crowd was silent, but to see him fighting the UK for the first time, submitting Vargas as well. This was on the no, yeah, this was on the main card as well. Really, really good finish by Paddy Pimlet. This was the second fight of his UFC career. So this was on the same card as well. And obviously nowadays we know him for fighting on the featured fight of the UFC 304, which is a pay-per-view. He's now fighting a ranked opponent. So for him to fight on this card as well, just shows how stacked this fight night is. And then we had Arnold Allen versus Dan Hooker. Two big stars again. Allen's a top five featherweight in the world. Dan Hooker's a big name in the lightweight division. These were on this. This is a fight night as well for the core main event. And this was such a good fight for the two minutes that it lasted. Arnold Allen just running forward to Dan Hooker, landing big shots, finished him nearly like five times, and then eventually got him to get to the cage, started unloading on him, finished Dan Hooker. But this was a brutal performance from Arnold Allen because... The fact that he did to Dan Hooker as well, which is a dangerous guy, but also the way that he was just flawlessly landing shots on Dan Hooker. It was a brutal fight. Dan Hooker looked like he had absolutely nothing in there. Nearly got finished like five times. Again, another first round finish for this card. This was in the yeah, this was in the, the core main event as well. This is a fight night. Again, Arnold Allen's now on the main card of UFC 304, a pay-per-view. And he was core main event in a fight night, which just shows how stacked this fight night was. And then the main event, Tom Aspinall, now core main event in a pay-per-view. He was Tom Aspinall versus Alexander Volkov. And this fight was kind of special to see because this was the first time we really got to see Aspinall face adversity. Not that he, he faced adversity in the fight, but the type of opponent that Aspinall was facing. This was the first real test for Tom Aspinall because he'd beaten Sergei Spivak and he'd beaten Andrei Olovsky, but he was yet to beat anyone really good. And obviously he beat Alexander Volkov, again, one of the best heavyweights in the world right now. This was the main event for a, uh, a fight night. He goes out there, completely outclasses Volkov, outclassed him on the feet, took him down, got the straight arm lock, submitted him, and he kind of cemented himself as a contender in the heavyweight division. First time he had, he had ever fought in front of a crowd as well, main evented in front of the UK. And I just think this fight night still remains as the best event to take place in front of the UK um, and the, probably the best fight night of all time. Like, I know they weren't big stars at the time, but look at the fighters we had. We had Aspinall, Volkov, Alan Hooker, Paddy Pimlet, Molly McCandler delivering the brutal KO, Ilya Taporia, Sergei Pavlovich, Nikita Krylov, Paul Craig, Mohamed Makayev as well. All of these guys on the same card. If this was to take place that, that nowadays and how did they not fought each other, this would 100% be a pay-per-view. Most of these guys are fighting on 3 or 4. And the fact that this was on a fine night as well, and the crowd were good as well because it was the first time in a while that we'd actually had an event in the UK. I just think we have to recap to this card, obviously, since it's UFC 3 or 4 this weekend. If you watch this card live, you'll know what I mean. It was just finish after finish after finish. A lot of them uh, obviously went in to become big stars as well, so... That's just a quick recap on UFC Fight Night Aspinall versus Volkov. Because I feel like these days, every time a card finishes, no one ever talks about them again. And I just think we need to remember, if you've never watched that card, you need to go and watch it back somewhere because... It just felt like a fever dream. That was just finish after finish. So many big stars fought on this card. And this would, I mean, you'd never have Taporia on an Aspen on the same card, as long as with, a, a, you know, the other pay-per-view stars, because this would 100% be a stacked pay-per-view. And the fact that they're all on a fine art as well is crazy. So let me know your thoughts on this card if you did watch it live. And also let me know your thoughts on UFC 304. Thank you for watching.